Tech, speaking today with Marshall Ray and Brian Wolf about the Oakley, Kansas VFW, American Legion, and VFW Auxiliary. So thanks very much for taking the time to talk with me this week. No, you're welcome. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, first off, I listed off a whole bunch of organizations there. Um, can you just explain for our audience, um, what is the VFW and how does that differ from the VFW Auxiliary and the American Legion for either one of you? Let me get that. Take off. So the VFW is the organization that's for veterans that have served overseas in a foreign war, right? Or they could have served in Korea for 30 days because that's still an active war zone. Um, there, there are, there are some things like that. Um, the VFW auxiliary is for their family members, mm -hmm. right? The family is a big part of a, the veteran organization. So that is where the, the family can come in and, and contribute their portion. Uh, the American Legion is for anybody that has spent a day just being a soldier, a sailor, a Marine. If you've done that job for a day, then you can come be in, in the American Legion and, and, and continue your service in the American Legion. You went to basic training and broke your ankle. You're good to go. You went to basic training and, and didn't have to break your ankle, but you went to basic training for a day. You, you can, you can, you can, you can do that. And so for veterans who might be considering joining the organization, they've come back or they haven't been involved, um, what kind of activities can they expect on the post here in Oakley or around the country? Oh, just, you know, fundraisers and, and veteran support. You know, that's, you know, we take care of the veterans and uh, there's a national home, Rapids uh, City, Michigan, we support, you know, um, like it was the family that lives on base somewhere and for some reason... Um, They'd lose the red winner and they'd have to get off base in you know, 30 days generously to get off somewhere else. And so we support that national home. So mm -hmm. just uh, a lot of stuff like that. Any veterans support uh, needs things like, you know, maybe we uh, we built a ramp uh, one one day for a wheelchair for a uh, handicap accessible for just whatever needs to be done. Right. So for just for a veteran that lives in this community, if they need something, this organization tries to help them out. Right, right. And we do send money, you know, nationally too. So there's right, right. This organization we get together and try to help a local veteran if they needed it. Um, a local veteran can also come in because if they want to talk about things that they don't want to talk about with their family, they can do that as well. You know, uh, veterans veterans have a, a, a different sense of humor, <laughs> right? And my my wife, my family, they struggle with it. <laughs> if a if a if a veteran wants to come in and they want to talk, um, we're a place where I'll listen to them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if they did something horrible because they were forced to, and and I'm gonna make fun of them, just like I would. Veterans have a veterans have a different sense of humor. You can you can have the worst thing happen in your life, and we will pick the worst part of that, and we'll make fun of you for it. Right. And sometimes when people do that to me, you know, I'm like, oh, now I'm, now I'm comforted because you know? <laughs> somebody made fun of something that horrible happened in my life. And, and if there's somebody that, that, you know, they're, they're down on their luck, they just want to talk to somebody about happened, what happened in their life. Well, they can come in and, and, uh, they can talk to us and nobody's ever been judged here. Right. Right. I've done some dumb stuff. Marshall's done some dumb stuff. We've never judged each other, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's a good place for that. And yeah, we're not finished. <laughs> I will always judge Marshall <laughs> for anything that he does. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and family members, kind of the same set of activities. Uh, oh, yes. If they're, if they join the um, VFW auxiliary. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I Veterans Day, Memorial Day, those all those things all come around, and you know, and I'll be in the grocery store, and people will say, you know, thank you for your service. But I just want to remind people: if you're not thank anybody, thank thank the wives, thank the kids. You know, um, um, people people think I'm crazy when I say it, but on, on my deployments, the it, it it wasn't hard. My my wife had a harder time than I did. I had to worry about my job, right? Um, I had to worry about not getting killed, not getting blowed up, you know, and that's really all I was worry about really. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my, my wife, she had to worry about, you know, my son broke his arm, right. 
it, uh, hail storm come through to the roof leak. She had to worry about uh, getting the yard mowed. Um, she had to worry about did the washer leak. You know, she had to worry about do I have dog food. She had to worry about you know there's an oil spot under the car. You know, do I have to worry about that? When I when I was deployed, people people laid everything out for me. They told me when I was going to eat, where I was going to eat, where I was going to go for my job, what I was going to do for my job. It was all laid out. I just had to worry about getting that stuff done and not dying. You know? Yeah. My wife's job is <laughs> literally harder. It's it's hard to it's hard to grasp that somebody who's never been in that situation. But my not dying, you know, I, I took every step I could to make sure I didn't die. And And... My my wife did the rest, right? Yeah, that was that was my experience. Uh, being de- being deployed was the easiest part of being in the service. No paperwork. Uh, the food was sometimes bad, sometimes good, but always taken care of. And right, um, you usually did your shift, went out and did your job, and then came back and maybe had twelve hours off, and you didn't do anything. Right. That's so great. They, they told you when the chow hall closed. So if if you were there before the chow hall closed, you ate right. You didn't have to say, well, I have to go to the grocery store. We're out of bread. We're out of milk. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes just deciding what's for supper is the hardest part of life. Sometimes. Yeah. You know, it really is just deciding. (laughs) I didn't have to decide. I just went went to the chow hall and it was there. Well, Marshall, you were exposed to the VFW um, through your family at a pretty young age. And I'm curious if you could tell me how you first got involved. (laughs) My dad was a World War II veteran. Mm-hmm. And just living, you know, with him growing up, and 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 this was his his passion too, you know. Every detail that you know needed to be done, I really came to town and when I could and helped with everything and washed a bunch of dishes back there. And I was a kid, and mm-hmm. just it just was fascinating to me. And then the more I learned about it, the more I wanted to learn about it. And right, and so it was just he he had returned by the time you were born. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, but then just as you were growing up, he was really involved. Right. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. And and you know, um my uncle um married my dad's sister. He was very active in this post and and a couple other second cousins were very active in this post and so you come in here Saturday was a day everybody come to town to Oakley back in those days and we'd go to sale bar and watch the livestock auction and when it was over, we'd come down here and he'd sit over here you know, with his scotch and water and stir it around and talk. And I'd sit here on these benches and I'd just listen to the guys talk and it just soak it all in. And Yeah, that's great. And then um, when you, I guess, became an adult, when did how did you join the uh, VFW Authority? Well, it was 04 when they formed the National, decided to form a men's auxiliary to the VFW. And so... When I heard about that, I was all in. Yeah, we'll do that. And 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 uh, Jason, um, Jason, you should be a chef. I can't think of his name. Anyway, Moses. Moses, thank you. He said, I started on this, but I don't have time to finish it anymore because he just changed jobs. Can you run with this and get members? We got to have 20 members, get a charter. Do that. I go, yeah. And so I did. We got our charter. We started having meetings down here. It was just a post-level organization. There was no district, men's auxiliary, no department, no national. It was all just post level only. And whatever they needed help with, we did it, you know. And we had our own fundraisers on the side, you know. So if they needed some money, you know, we, we had a form. And then in 15, the uh, department decided to, along with the, what then, up until then, was the ladies' auxiliary. Because back in 1917, when they formed the, the ladies' auxiliary, the men all had the VFW go to, and the women had to sit at home. You know, well, they didn't want to sit at home. They wanted something to do, so they formed the ladies' auxiliary. Mm-hmm. Well, then in 2015, they decided there's a lot of women in the military, and they're coming home from overseas, and they can join the VFW, but there's nothing for their men to do. So they said, okay, we're going to drop the ladies' auxiliary and make the um, auxiliary to the VFW and allow men in it. And so the men's auxiliary is now done. It's no longer anymore. And so we all, the members here, we all rolled over into the uh, new auxiliary. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. Cool. The the auxiliary really is kind of the backbone of the VFW anymore. Um, they have more members, obviously, because one veteran can sponsor 
multiple auxiliary members, mm -hmm. right? And and there's there's not there's not that many war veterans left anymore, right? You know, so they they really the auxiliary does a big part for the VFW because they have more members, they have more activity, they have more, they have, they they just they just do a lot more for us. Our eligibility is two generations up or down from where you're at. So I can sign up under a grandparent or a parent, brothers, sisters, son or daughters, grandchildren, any of them that have been overseas, plus step grandparents or steps, brothers and sisters all through. So that kind of widens it out, you know, to, like you said, one, um, well, like my dad, I mean, all my sisters and my brothers and my kids, you know, cause there's grandpa, they all signed up under him, you know, so. Right. Right. Today's, today's veteran, if, if, uh, if a 19 year old kid goes to war today and comes back to Oakley for the first 10, 15 years, he's not going to want to join the VFW. So our, our numbers are, are low because the older generation has passed on and the younger generation, they use, they use alcohol and the internet for their support. <laughs> right. So the younger generation doesn't join the VFW. So the VFW auxiliary picks up what's left, and they they carry on the tradition for us. But but, but you'd say you'd certainly encourage and welcome any a veteran, young or old, to, to get involved. Absolutely, yeah. Any young veteran that comes back, I would I would I would beg him to come down and and uh, you know and talk to us, spend a night with us, and. You know, an evening after stag or come help us with an event. And I think they will get a lot out of the the day and they will they will they will get some I don't know, some enjoyment out of it that they probably didn't think they would have. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's great. Another thing we've been picking up, um, like doing flag etiquette in the school. Mm -hmm. You know. We the first one we did up here in Oakley, they were all sitting in the auditorium and we came marching in. And it posted the colors out there, and they all just all sat in a chair and watched us come in. And and, and I, I'm not too tactful sometimes, and I don't remember exactly what I said. But Bert said it's something like, "You said they failed miserably," and I said, "Okay, I probably said that <laughs> because they didn't stand and you know as the flag is in review like they're supposed to." Mm -hmm. And we went back two years later, and you've been in an auditorium with spring loaded chairs. When you stand up, they'd make no. I mean, we started marching down there, and everybody stood up. And and so they they did learn from it. So and proper flag retirement, you know, we've had those ceremonies up here at the school, and we did Winona uh, last year. Being visible in the community of, and what we're doing, we present colors at the football game up here at Oakley. Nobody else has told me that anybody else in the state of Kansas does that. When Oakley went to state, was it two years ago or three? Three. They played for first place. We went to Hayes. Did our own color guard. And did our color guard at Hayes at the state championship game. Yeah. And that's great. And to, and to flip the script just a little bit, you did recently help us with the service. And as a and as a young veteran yourself, right? Skinnier, younger, <laughs> prettier than all of us. More hair. Right. More hair. <laughs> when you walked away, did you walk away with a, a feeling that you accomplished something, you felt better, right? Did you walk away with the feeling of, first, you walked away with the feeling of, oh, crap, I'm glad that was over. Right, right, right. But later, did you, did you walk away with a, a good feeling that, wow, I really I really did something to help the community? Well, I did because people came up and told me so directly, yeah. that yeah. how much they appreciated yeah. the fact that we were there. Um, and I also then sort of felt a little bit of guilt, like I was like, I should have been doing this a long time ago. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great way to spend your Saturday afternoon honoring somebody who served this country. Um, right. And hanging out with other people that respect that tradition. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that was really enjoyable actually. Yes. Um, Marshall, you, uh, you lost your son to the war in Afghanistan. Um, and we were talking about just, just the other day that the flag ceremony, um, when you were presented a flag, mm -hmm. it seems mm -hmm. like that, that probably made uh, support of these memorial services more meaningful. Um, and I just wondered if you could tell me about Trenton and his service to the okay. country and then how 
you know, your views and relationship with the VFW has, has changed in your mind since that happened. Yeah. Um, after I graduated, I worked in town for a few years and I went back to the farm and then raised my family out there. So Trenton, like me, grew up in the shadow of these veterans. And it, and he it was like me, he's that sponge. He just soaked everything in. Military history and, and, and any kind of history, he just he just loved it. He's a second grade. He could tell you any president in order. You you could say who was number seven, and he could tell you. Just he just studied that and, and he was he was good at what he did. He was very committed to it. And he knew the whole time he wanted to be in the army when he grew up. And then a friend of ours, Mark Conboy, used to be a high patrolman here in town. Um, he was an MP in the in the army and kind of put that seed there. And then Trenton, he just one day he says, I'm I'm gonna be an MP. And and that's what he did when he when he joined in. Mm -hmm. So what was the other part of your question? I forgot it. Well, uh, just about how um his death um, affected your relationship with the VFW. Um, and then I assume. Well, yeah, it was, you know, Fort Riley used to come out and do all the, well, f originally back in the day, the post members. And then they got where there wasn't so many members. They were old and they couldn't march so good, you know, and, and uh, Fort Riley came in with the team. And actually Trenton did one stateside tour at uh, Fort Riley. And he got on this team that traveled around. And so um, I was really fascinated with that. And when I got the opportunity to help full time with that, why, I enjoyed it. Well, then Fort Riley got budget cuts back and they would only do Army. They wouldn't do Air Force, Navy or anybody only do Army funerals. And well, then they cut back again and they'd only send a two man team, maybe three, fold the flag, play taps and, and present the flag. And that's so they wouldn't bring out a firing squad or anything. So, you know, we, Something that, I don't know, maybe I pushed it, but I said, we got to do this. And everybody was, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So now they don't even call the National Guard, the Cutter Guard team or anything. We just, we do it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was a job that kind of fell on me because one of our other members, uh, White Sims, when he, my uncle, when he quit, he couldn't do it anymore. And he told me, you take over this job. And I'm thinking, I am not qualified to you know, I got a sergeant and I got a major and I'm going to give them orders. You know, I can't, he says, you know what to do and you know how to do it. And I said, okay. Right. So I didn't have a flag because I've marched them in and I didn't have a the bugle or I didn't have a rifle or anything. I was the sergeant of arms. So it was just natural for me to walk out and give the flag and everybody says, yeah, you do it. We don't want to, you do it. Mm -hmm. So I started doing it and it was such an honor to present that flag to the family. Right. Yeah, it really is. And then all of a sudden, they're giving me a flag, you know. Right. So it was a little tough after that for a couple, a couple of them, and just kind of go somewhere else for a little bit and get through it. And right. Yeah. He he says for a couple, but I think Mar Marshall's he's well, he always has a hard time. It's he and the flag. He always does, and understandably. Mm -hmm. But people in the world don't understand what kind of an honor it is to hand a flag to a family member. They don't understand. And then for Marshall to have that honor, and then yet to have the emotions come back every single time he hands the flag off. What do you think of his son? It's, Jim, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a bit, and and it, and it makes it makes it more special. Because he's got those emotions and he hands, he can hand the flag off to somebody he's never met in his life. But he hands a flag off and he's thinking of his son every time. And even though, you know, it, it may not be visible to most people, but the family realize that there's emotion inv involved. It's hard for Marshall. It's, it's really hard. And I always push him to be the one to hand the flag off. I always, I always push it and say, Marshall, you're doing it. Because he has that emotion that he lost his son and he hands a flag, even if it's some 90 some year old guy he's never met in his life and he'll even he'll <laughs> live in Oakley for a day. <laughs> he's handing that flag yeah. off. Yeah. And the family feels that emotion and it makes it more special for the family because that's, I mean, we're doing it for the veteran, but we're doing it for the veteran, the veteran's family also, you know. It was Mrs. Dyke Lindemann who was the first funeral afterwards. 
and uh, we're at the cemetery and she just i mean when i walked up she's just got tears just going down. and so then we came back here we was putting the rifles and the flags away and they're back in the back room having a funeral dinner mm -hmm. and i said you guys come on back here and eat and she came up to me and she said i want you to know i wasn't crying over Doug because he wasn't in pain anymore i was crying for you Good thing I didn't know that then. <laughs> I probably would have lost it. <laughs> but uh, but Jim Boyd, that was a tough one because he was a member here. And I don't know was a really tough one. Yeah. yeah, he was an active member. He come down a lot. I talked to Jim a lot. That was that was really and, and he had conveyed to his family that he wanted his entire service here at the club. That was a very yep yep he loved it. That was his heart. He loved the post. He loved the people. He loved the veterans. That was a really hard one. Mm -hmm. You know it. It was, but I, I and he died too young too. That made it work. right, right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brian, can you tell me about your military service and then how? Who hooked you? How'd you get involved when you got home? After my deployment, I came home, and uh, I came home on Thanksgiving Day, and that, that's that's a busy time for everybody. And somebody from the Oakley VFW met us at Manhattan on Thanksgiving Day to come and welcome us home, and I thought, wow. That was pretty special. He gave up his Thanksgiving. Right. And I came down, when I came home, I came down and I, I joined up. I, I joined up for a life, lifetime membership. I spent the money. I got it done. And then I didn't come to any meetings. I was like, I thought that's all I needed to do. And then later, years later, um, I was approached and said that we really need some help. All the old people are dying off. We need some young people, and uh, and I come down then and and started to be active in the VFW. Um, it, it it's kind of a two. It's kind of a double edged thing. You know, you can you can. I served twenty four years in the military, and now I have an extra duty. I have a duty that I can never give up the rest of my life. It's kind of a double edge, right? Right. I mean. Okay. Mar Marshall agrees that he, he can't just quit and not do it because people expect it. <laughs> I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> right? Yeah. <clears throat> and the families deserve it. Families deserve it. Their veteran put his line, his name on that line. And I've, I've, I've said at home before, you know, drinking and thinking, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm like, well, well, crap. <laughs> well... This guy did this. He needs he needs this. You know, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go in. I'm going to do my duty. I'm going to do what I need to do, you know, to help this guy. Because if, if, if some old guy, some old Vietnam vet or World War II vet, if he doesn't get buried because I decided that I don't want to do my extra duty, if I don't want to go help today, if he doesn't get his military honors, is that right? Right. You know? I mean, I retired from the military. I should be done. I should be. But this is it's it's something that just it just it just needs to happen. Right. You know? Well and I mean I observe people have a good time as well. Right. If there is a duty, but it's also an enjoyable right camaraderie with the right. both the auxiliary and the VFW. Yes. Right. Yes. And the legion. Observe. It 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 feels like an extra duty until you go to do it. Then once it's done, you're like, wow. I am so glad I come to yeah. this. I got to do you know, that. I got to do that. I got to help that family yep. feel better. It it just I don't know, it, it hits different. Now if if the if the funeral's on Saturday on the Wednesday, I'm like, oh God. <laughs> I gotta go out to this funeral poll. One funeral day comes around and you get down and you see the family and they say, Thank you for doing this. You feel really good about yourself. You feel like, wow, I did something today. I didn't just sit on the couch and, you know, watch TV. I didn't just, you know, do. I did something worthwhile today. Right. You know? Do you, either of you have thoughts on, um, you know, this is for veterans and family members, but how about just people in the community at large? Um, you know, what can we do to, uh, they do to support and honor veterans and their families, whether or not they're a member? Fly flag. You know, just to show your patriotism. Um, you know, uh, we're a non-for-profit. You know, if they want to tax um, 
right off they can make a you know, uh, mm-hmm. do, uh, donation to us. You know, we have meals in here. Come in and come in and have a meal. You know, we even added the drive through, which was really a good a good thing to do because of COVID, we couldn't have them in here, but we did a drive through, and a lot of people would come through there and get stuff that never came inside to eat. So a lot of meals on the drive, and some of them, you know. They, 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 well, I want to come inside and eat, you know, well, when some now, some do come inside and some go outside and we do our best to keep up with, with them, you know, so just there's way to, ways to support us. I come right back to thanking the family. It's, it's the soldier can't do, I say soldier just cause I'm armed with it. The soldier can't do what he does without the family support. And if you don't, if you don't see the, the, the wife of the soldier or the husband of the soldier. If you don't, if you don't see them and say, Hey, thanks for what you do. Thanks for covering for them. Thanks for, thanks for doing the things that need done so they can, so they can do what they, without that, it wouldn't happen. You know, right. if, when, when I was deployed, if, if my wife just said, screw it, I'm done. I'm not take care of my kids. I'm <laughs> done. Right. If she said that the red cross would have come and got me and said, sorry, Wolf, your family's in disarray and you need to come home because your wife stopped feeding your kids. Your wife stopped doing this. Your... So I would have not been able to do my duty. Right. So right. my wife was the one that made it possible for me to do that. And if it, they're, they're so, they're, they're so underrated. The family is so underrated. And even if it's a, even if it's a, you know, a, a 19 year old unmarried child, um, mom and dad is taking care of their finances. They're, you know, they're taking care of their car. If, you know, like if, like if you're, like if your son had cattle, you know, while he was deployed, you're feeding his cows. Yep. You're doing things for Trenton, right? Yep. You're taking care of his things. Parents, wives, husbands, and, and kids, uh, kid, kids are kind of rubber. They they don't get affected as much, but the older kids they they do, but the family of the of the deployed member, they really have a big part that people don't realize, right? Well, and the stress and anxiety of uh, the uncertainty weighs on them heavily, right? Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah, yeah. I one day I got a call on my cell phone that said anonymous. I thought I don't know if I want to answer this or not. Do I? And so I went ahead and answered it. And it was Trenton calling from Afghanistan. The last time I talked to him, so glad I answered that call. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. That's great. Well, um, the Gold Star Tribute Wall mm-hmm. uh, is coming to Oakley on May twentieth. Uh, I wondered if you could just explain to people what that is. Um, I think this episode will probably air that weekend, but uh, if people want to come out and see it. What can they expect? <clears throat> And how did, uh, how's it, how, why is it coming to Oakley? <laughs> okay. Well, again, that's my fault, I guess. <laughs> it's coming here. Um, I just saw this, you know, on Facebook or something several years ago and thought that was a pretty cool thing and, and kind of thought about it and tried to find somebody else that would do it. And I didn't have much luck with that. So I went ahead. Okay. I guess I'll do this myself, but it's a traveling wall, uh, similar to the traveling Vietnam wall. Um, it has the names of all the casualties of the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan on there. They're on a gold star, though. You know, um, it started back um, the stars and the blue star banners from World War II. If you had somebody serving overseas, you'd hang a blue star uh, mm-hmm. in your window. Know, right. Yeah, or two or three or however many you happen to have, you know, serving back then. And then if you had one that's killed in action, then you got a gold star banner. So that's where the gold star came from. And then the... the Casualties, their name are in the, the gold star engraved in the name instead of engraved in the the granite like the like the Vietnam Wall is. Right. So it's got all these gold stars on there and seven thousand names on it. Right. And so yeah, it's coming to Oakley. I contacted the the guy uh, Samuel that it was his vision to do this, and he hauls it you know all around and it's not funded by anybody. So we had to hit some bricks you know and get some money raised to get it here it was like seven grand because we got to pay his expenses and and uh but you know like uh i don't know how can we mention names and businesses that really helped out here sure. yeah okay whoever, whoever supported <laughs> you in the effort okay 
So yeah, he said, you know, we, we need money for meals. We need a hotel room provided for us. And you know, while we're there, you know, and so I just went to IHOP and uh, the manager out there, her name is Katie. And I asked her, explain to what this is coming to Oakley and, and, and about meals. Can, can we buy a gift certificate for them or something? Or, and, and she said, you tell them they're hungry. You come out here, we'll feed them. And, and then as a uh, talking to BJ, um, at the bluff one day and I'm talking about this store and he says, you bring them down, I'll feed them a steak. Okay. Kansas country in. Yeah. We'll, we'll donate the rooms for them to stay in. And so when I told him this on the phone, he just says, wow, I just, you guys are blessed to live in a community like that. Yeah, you know, correct. I said, yeah, we, we are. So that's, I guess is what's got it coming in that we had to pay up half last November or December. We had to pay half of it to get this date locked down. Cause I wanted it here when the run for the wall came through. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I guess you can talk about that too. Yeah. Uh, People need to remember that they come in to eat, you know, a chicken fried on, on uh, our stag night. That money that they pay for that goes to that gold, that gold store memorial. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's this free will donation, but if somebody comes in and they drop a $10 bill for a meal, that $10 meal is going towards this. Right. It goes to the spot. That these, that these, yeah, whatever needs to be paid. It's paying to bring this out. And this, this, this memorial wall is, I think is an amazing, amazing thing. Um, at all, all the other veteran groups, you know, your, your World War One, World War Two, Korea, all these groups have a memorial that, that their family could go to. Right. In Washington, D.C. In Washington. This, this one is one of the first ones that I know of, and I've done, I've done, there, there's one for the Gulf War, but I think it's in Britain. It's not here, right? But this is the first one that I know of that people can go to that they still have living close relatives, mm -hmm. right? Um, you, I, I don't know, I have members, my family members in the Vietnam War Memorial, but I don't consider myself a, a living relative anymore. It was so long ago. This this memorial is have people that has mo mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters. They can go see this memorial, right? Mm -hmm. This is an amazing thing. Yeah, well, and friends we served with. Friends, I yeah. I served with Derek Luders from Goodland. I went on missions with him. I did stateside missions, and he's on that wall. Mm -hmm. It is an amazing thing that we're able to bring that out here in Oakley, Kansas. Little, little, <laughs> we can bring this out here to where people yeah. can come and see it and remember their loved ones here in Oakley. And, and their, their mothers, their fathers, their brothers and sisters, they're still living. You know, I, I, can, I can go to Washington and I can see my, you know, my, my great uncle, you know, that I never spoke to him, but I can go see that I, but I can go, go to Oakley, Kansas. And I can see a guy that I sat on a stairwell in a barracks and, and drank beer with him. Mm -hmm. I can see his name. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. It is an amazing thing. And I don't know if everybody fully understands the impact of it. Probably not, but, but I hope they do eventually. So they can uh, go on the internet to tributewall.org and see pictures of it. And they, they've got all explained on there what the, is our mission and why we need this. And it's, it's all, it's, it's right there. It's very well and truthfully written what's, what's on there. Yeah, right. That's great. Yeah. I mean, and there's also a Gold Star family from Nebraska that has, uh, I think, a set on this wall that's going to be here. On the on the twenty first, and the Sunday when the run for the wall is here, right? Yeah, and they'll be open day and night. You know, got lights on out there. You know, if you work till eleven at night and you want to see it, come on and look at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, tell for people that don't know about the run to the wall. Um, what is this big motorcycle ride, and what are what are those guys doing? <laughs> well, every year they ride for those <clears throat> who can't. You know, whether they were killed in action or MIA or, you know, they, they, that's their motto. We ride for those who can't. And they start in California and there's three routes. There's a Northern route and they pick up 
you know, all the way. And there's a central route that comes through here and then a southern route. Mm -hmm. And we are their lunch stop. We have been for years. They, they, they come in here and, and we always got food for them and something for them to eat. And then they're always very grateful, thankful, and great people to, to visit with. And I've got acquainted with quite a few people coming here every year uh, through here. So um, they're on the way and they meet, then they all converge um, at the wall at uh, in D.C. Yeah. Their, their mission is to meet in Washington for Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. All three routes meet up at one time for Memorial Day. And if, if nobody's, if, if you've never seen 300 Harleys start at one time. <laughs> yeah. Stand there when they, when they all go by the, on the street. It is yep. an amazing thing. Bring your kids out, come out yourself to, to feel your chest rattle and, yep. to, and to see all these people that have, they've given up a portion of their life. I mean, these, I've, yeah. I follow them on Facebook and some of these people have, have started packing and they've started making preparations a month ago. It's, it's, they have given up a portion of their life to make this happen. I, I, I seen a guy on Facebook, uh, three weeks ago that his pickup broke down. So he went to the dealership and rented a pickup for two months. <laughs> like how much do you have to spend to yeah. rent a yeah. four door pickup for two months? You know, that's, that's, that's a lot for the dedication that he has because he's one of the, he's one of the trail guys that follows in. And if a, if a motorcycle breaks down, he picks them up, takes them to the dealership to get them fixed, you know, so they can carry on. Um, it's a, it's an amazing thing. When you see that many motorcycles parked that close together and they all start at one time, it's like, oh, wow, look at, look at, look at this. This is, this is yeah. pretty cool. And sound, you know, sounds cool. If you've yeah. got kids. If you've got, mm. especially little boys, little boys love that kind of stuff. If you get little boys, yeah. bring yeah. them out for that so they can see it. And then when they leave, you can walk them through the 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 Gold Star Memorial Wall and teach them some history. You know, um, people people need to see that history. Their kids need to see that history. That's that's it's it just is it needs to happen. Yeah, it's kind of the point. Yeah, yeah that is the. point. There's, there's still conflicts been going on, you know, it's not like, you know, the world war two and the Korean war and Vietnam war was on TV every night, you know, and, but it's still going on. People need to know that, that our freedom, it isn't free. Well, uh, this summer, uh, this, uh, kind of the whole community, I think is going to be celebrating the life of white and Lily and Sims. Yeah. Um, and yeah. White served in World War II. Uh, you were just showing me the document. He was a founding member of this VFW. Yeah. And I wonder if you have any memories of, of White and or any of the other uh, members through the years that you might have <laughs> colorful stories that you'd want to share. How, how long is this? <laughs> <laughs> we need to do the part two. <clears throat> so, yeah, White, and, and, and you knew him. <clears throat> he had, you know, you might describe as a drill sergeant voice. I mean, that was his normal voice. You could hear him. When he, as soon as he came into the building, if he was in the back, you heard him. You knew he was, you knew he was in. And so he was a sergeant of arm, and he gave the, the commands, you know, for the color guard and the firing squad and everything. And he had the voice for it, and he had the knowledge for it. And so, <clears throat> yeah, he was he was very active. And one time, I heard my dad describe him as the member that reports in for every detail that ever came along, whether we're tarring the roof, you know, or paint. Or stucco and restuccoing on the side, or doing something. He it was he was here. He he was lucky. I mean, he's like me, he's a farmer, a rancher, and you know, well, I work a little later tonight. I'm going to take off two, three hours and go do this funeral. You know, where like a lot of our members, you know, they work and they can just take off in the middle of the day, you know, and uh, and go to a funeral. And he could, so he was he was in the air thing every month. He was back there over that hot stove cooking uh, chicken fried steaks and. <laughs> He he just was was always was always in everything. Just yeah, very active. And as a wee young soldier, I remember I come back before I was active, and somebody had called me and said, "Hey, we need some help with a." It might have been Memorial Day. It was pretty, but it was Veterans Day. It was a Veterans Day parade because they needed you know we were, we were gonna march, and I remember walking in and I remember seeing White, and because and. Uh, White was a gruff man. He was gruff. He was stern. But he was actually a pretty caring guy also. 
Yeah, I remember walking in. He was just barked out orders. You this, you that. Yeah. And I remember uh, somebody had the American flag, and he's like, you're not going to do that. Sergeant Wolf's going to do that. He needs the American flag. And he would, and, uh, he, I remember him walking over to uh, whoever had the, the post flag. And the, our post flag, it, it it's a big felt thing, and it, it's heavy, and it picks up the wind. And, and I remember walking, him walking over to him and saying, so so we have a lot of wind today. And, and he just he flipped the switch. Why it was like, so it's gonna be pretty windy today, and and that's a that's a long walk. Are you are you sure you can handle that? You could tell you he like he turned caring for a second, right? And yeah. and they're like, well, well, maybe not. And he's like, why don't we give this flag to this person? Yeah, you know, and then flip the switch right around to gruff and barking yeah. orders. I think so as as gruff and as 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 directive as he was. He was still a caring man. You know, he yeah. was a caring yeah. man, but whenever White Sands give an order, it, you jumped, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because he was, he was good at what he did. He knew as he was a good NCO. You know, he, he knew his mm-hmm. people. He knew their expectations. He knew what they could handle. And, you know, and if, if some little, you know, 100-pound, 90-year-old guy was going to try to carry this yeah. flag. Here's Mel Shaw. Right. Here's Mel Shaw. Yeah. 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 So... He was good enough to to be kind and say, "Hey, <laughs> so the wind's blowing on today." <laughs> but, but he was, and as soon as he got the system rectified, he was right back to to White Sims and snapping to and you know and getting people in. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember when when White was over at the, I was at the assisted living over there. Yes, we yeah. had we had something over at the at the park, and White come over and he was a. Uh, he was pretty frail and stumbling around, but by golly, he walked over to that park and he did what he, yeah. you know, he yeah. stood and he washed and he saluted the way he needed to salute. And when we gave him the 90 year pins, 90 year membership to the FW. 90 year membership. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, not 90. Seven, 70, yes. 70 year pins. And his wife, Lillian, 70 years in the auxiliary, too. Yes. So. They, they both got their pins. Uh, I think we delayed, we delayed whites a little bit so we could do Lillian's at the same time, right? Yeah. So we, we went to the to the manor and and I I remember since since I was a VFW member and he was VFW but you were auxiliary so you were gonna give Lily hers before. and I was a you know be a little bit of a smart ass you know and and I I remember whenever it was time for me to give uh, White his his pen and and I remember I just, I just started it with saying attention to orders and. To any military member, they know they have to stand and come to attention. And I was like, "Oh God, he's gonna do it!" You know. Like, and I remember I grabbed him on his shoulder and said, "White, I'm just, I'm just white. Sit down." I was just, just. Teasing. But he was doing it. He had his hand. He was getting ready to push, stand was, himself. He was going to he attention. Was old frail and he could have stand. I guarantee you, if I would have let him go, White would have stood. Right? He yep. couldn't stand anymore. But I guarantee you, if I'd have given him the time. <laughs> He would have stood to receive that honor. Yeah. I guarantee he would have. He was, he was, he was a man's man. He really was. Yep. Very dedicated. Very dedicated to yes, to service and honor. It all it all meant a really big thing to White Sands. Right. And and that whole generation, you know, I mean, yeah, the greatest generation. You know well, what they did. We can't fathom it. No. We cannot realize this whole nation together to defeat an enemy. And then come back and have all these guys that went through so much stuff, you know. I mean, I told about Saturday. It was sale day, you know, and we'd come to town Saturdays. We'd come down here and Dad have a drink, and I'd sit at the side over here, and I'd listen to these stories that I wouldn't hear at the family reunion or if I asked Dad, you know, so Dad, over in Germany. And see, my dad wrote letters home all the time, and, and Grandma had these letters, and we read them, and, you know, you said here or something about it being pretty noisy, you know, and he goes, oh, just artillery, you know. And everything was censored, you know, of course, there too. And so, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no way. As much, as, much as, I, as much as I trust today's military, there is no way. No way today's military could have done what the, what the greatest generation did. There's no way. We couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. Yeah. Do you agree? Oh, from what I know about it, you know, but you are a lot better judge than I am. Yeah, it's different. It's, you know, I, so many foreign kids back then. My, my, first, my first, it was a true national effort. 
yeah. wasn't just the national like of yes. people. And we kids, had, kids right, raised right. different. Like every kid was a farm kid. Every kid was, every kid was tougher. Um, when my first, my first deployment, I called my wife's grandpa, Rex Shaw. He was unhealthy and he was really, he was, he had been talking about me and asking about me. And my wife had wrote me some letters and said, you really need to call pop. He's worried about you. And I, I remember I, 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 I jumped through a lot of hoops to get to a place where I could call him. And I called him on the phone and I talked to Rex and, and I, and I told him about supper last night and he's like, supper. Well, what, what'd you have? And I told him, he goes, you, you had a meal. <laughs> Like you sat down and you had a meal and it was hot. So yes, Rex, it was. Yeah, we had this and this and and then after that, I went and he goes and you had a shower. <laughs> yes, Rex, I yes, I yeah, I he oh I I don't I don't I don't know, Brian, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, in 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 his days, you know, in the greatest generation, you know, because he served and just like just same time frame as White Sims. They were a different people. They were tougher. They were harder. I'm not saying that today's generation couldn't be that tough, but it would it would take a big wake up call for them to be that tough. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Could Could you go three months without a shower? Could you Could you live in a hole in the ground that you had to dig yourself? We literally had cookies, yes, <laughs> and ice cream right the chow hall. So no. Yeah, no. Not on the invasion, but it's not that far after, right? right. It didn't last for four years. Yeah, right. right. It sort of did in some ways for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, so you're only for the duration. They went over and back and right. over and back, and there, I mean, there's a difference there. When, when I was deployed, I went to a different spot, and I ended up eating at a different chow hall that had a flower arrangement on the table, <laughs> right? I mean, it was, wasn't flowers, but it was like a little plant on the table, you know, and it 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 felt good, and I'm thinking, wow, they they have something on the table that's like for decorations and yep, yeah, yeah. you know. And at the same time, there's sandbags on the outside of the wall, and there's clearing barrels so you can, you know, bring your weapon in and not worry about having an accidental fire. And it's still a war zone, right? There's still yeah. people dying. There's still people getting shot, but they had an arrangement on the table. That was a big thing for me. So I see a little plant. As decoration, where I ate my lunch, it seems like a small thing, but it was big to me at the time. Yeah, my son Trenton's first deployment was Guantanamo Bay, being an MP, he was a transport guard handling those prisoners. And he called me from down there one day, and <clears throat> I said, "So what are you doing?" He says, "Well, first off, I got to tell you, I can't say too much because the." Um, Americans are listening in on this line, and he said there's probably a bunch of Cubans listening too. Well, you know, on his line, you know, he said, but I can tell you, I'm handing out toilet paper to international terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so political down here because outside the wire of the camp, um, CNN and Navy, all these vans out there, and they're up on the roofs of them with cameras so they can see over, and watch them as they escort these prisoners through the courtyard. And he said sometimes they didn't want to go and they just sit down. Well, you know, they learned all these tricks to help them stand up but decide they want to walk without beating them, you know. Well, he couldn't, couldn't be physical means because all these cameras are on him. So, and then when he came back here, and we were sitting down here, and uh, Walter Ween says, well, we need to get you signed up for the VFW. And he says, oh, I'm not eligible. We're just a Gitmo. And they go, well, yeah, you are. And it wasn't too long. Then we were made eligible, you know. So, so Trenton was a life member down here, too, yeah. also. So, so we had two generations here at one time, uh, Dad and, and Trenton in uh, the VFW. And actually, for a while before my mother passed away, we had four generations in the auxiliary. Of race? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, any other stories you want to share? Oh, um, Daryl Bankin was a, a member here, and uh, he actually left here. He had a body shop in town, and then he left here and took the quartermaster job at an department, which is the only paid position in the state but um he was he was a really great guy vietnam veteran and and i was telling you earlier that that poem that i wrote that that's where i learned about the m16 being a mattel you know the toy maker is a because it had plastic on it yeah so yeah i think you, you you gave me that poem here i won't read the whole thing but uh i guess can you tell me about that um and maybe we'll get a oh 
clip of it and play it on the air or something. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So um, daughter's going to school at Col College of Kobe in at the ag class, and there's a kid out there from Clay Patton from Colorado. Um, he's working part time for the radio station, giving the market report, and he had heard been out to my farm because they had parties out there, you know, because it was outside of the city limits, you know. Well, anyway, he heard some of my cowboy poetry stuff. And then, so he called me and he says, I still have my airtime on Veterans Day, but I don't, there's no markets. And I'm trying to fill this in with something patriotic. And he says, can you help me out with something? And I go, well, let me think about it. So I kind of started thinking about it. And man, it just, the idea just kept running and running. And I wrote this poem and it all came out and kind of a timeline from this, from the World War One, all the way through the present. It talks about, um, the M16 being a Mattel toy in there, and it talks about, um, I just got back from the um, Honor Flight, which was a great, hey, if people want to support veterans, they could donate to the Kansas Honor Flight. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, just got back with Jack Stevenson on that Honor Flight, and he was a Ford Observer in Korea. Couldn't hear anything out of one ear, and the, and the other was just about as bad. Well, anyway, so if I come to, to the Korean War, you know, I talked about, um, um, oh, geez, now I went blank. Um, the hill over there. Uh, Pork Chop Hill? Pork Chop Hill, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because he told me about that. So, oh, so I put that in there. Every line in that poem has some kind of a experience with me, you know. And uh, the trip to Dover, you know, that was that was really something. Well, I think that's, maybe maybe I, I changed my mind. I think maybe, why don't we close and you, if, you, if you just want to read it. Oh, I think that'd be a great way to sort of close out there. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> this year, as we observe Veterans Day, when we stand at the parade with our hands over our hearts, see, that was a subtle hint that I was putting out there for people to pay attention to. Okay, let's not forget how this nation came together. It was because our veterans did their part. The war to end all wars ended 1918 on the 11th of November. Then came December 7th. Didn't they remember? They survived the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression. Their homeland had been suddenly and deliberately attacked, and now it was time for retaliation. They left behind their factories, their dairies, their farms, or their ranch to stand in line to sign up for a military branch. Some for the Army, Navy, Marines, or the Army Air Corps. This enemy had to be stopped, or there would be more. In May of 45, we celebrate VE Day, which is today, and our soldiers knew the next job at hand. Then came the dawning of the nuclear age, and we had victory over Japan. Five years later, MacArthur is in the Pacific still, sending our soldiers into battles with names like Porkchop Hill. Then came rice paddies, booby traps, and a gun made by a Battelle, and that faithful sound of a Huey that they all knew so well. A dictator came to power with the invasion of Iraq. As a world leader, we couldn't just turn our back. With the United Nations beside us, we used our awesome military powers then we got blindsided by attack on our Twin Towers. Civilian heroes saved more lives when they lost their own in a Pennsylvania field. This shows the quality of people this nation can yield. The eager courage with which they went forward to places like Benghazi, Fallujah, Kandahar and such, may God make us worthy as a nation for what our veterans gave to us. Whether you make the bullet, pull the trigger, or run a computer at a desk, you're part of a chain that makes our military machine the world's very best. I went to a ceremony at Dover Air Force Base, and while standing on the tarmac, I prayed we never forget the ones who went to war and never made it back. To all the veterans who so honorably served the red, white, and blue, shake your hand and say welcome home. And a big thank you. That's you.